Slavic Telly here. What's up, guys? I just want to go over a few things, uh, uh, give you maybe a couple of tips or challenges that I have with this knife. Uh, so here we go. Uh, we'll start with a uh, Kydex. Uh, I added four more holes on it, so the the belt clip could be moved up and down. Uh, I used uh, regular nail polish that my wife uses, a clear clear nail polish, and I put it on the threads. This way, when you screw it on, it'll it'll hold and uh, the bolts will, will not come off. I had another comment where uh, the person said, this knife should have had a leather sheath for it, but I go with what the customer wants and how much they can afford. So this is a $50 Kydex versus a $250 leather sheath. That's the one I paid for uh, Tanto Kukri. So I go with what the customer wants or can afford. One thing guys, when you ask a question, um, my channel is getting big and it's getting harder and harder to reply to all the comments but when people ask me where'd you get the handle uh, what kind of steel did you use where'd you get the steel what thickness is it look below guys please uh, it's it's all there I put all the info there for you to use so all the information is there uh, so for those of you that don't look down this is a 1075 high carbon steel uh, it is 316 thick. I got it from New Jersey Steel Baron. The Damascus steel, I got it from Nichols Damascus. So NicholsDamascus.com. The handle, I got from uh, the guy that I follow on Instagram. He, uh, and he goes by the name of uh, Ironwood Man. Then I used uh, G10 red uh, fiberglass spacers. So there was a question, why did I use uh, Damascus steel? Because it's so expensive. They, they felt like I wasted um, precious metal or something. I use it because of the contrast that it gave to the knife and to the pommel. Um, the tip about the Damascus is make sure you heat treat it uh, before you put it on a knife. Why? Because it gives a nice deep edge where you can't, you can't get this contrast if you don't heat treat it. Let me show you. So when I made this uh, uh, Damascus butterfly knife, you notice this is the part that I dipped into the oil. You see how it's darker here and it's lighter here? Even though on camera it looks like it's all good, but... You see how this part is lighter than this one? This part was heat treated and this wasn't because when I dipped it in the oil, the oil went up to only here so this part etched very well and this one halfway or so it doesn't have that nice deep color to it so make sure you guys um, heat treat your uh, uh, handguard and a pommel um, after you heat treat it sand it to 400 to 600 grit maximum because if you go in your higher grit the etching won't, won't work that well uh, it won't eat into the steel um, because you know when, when you uh, uh, polish your steel to let's say 1200 grit or higher it become you know the water just want to slide off of it and but if you have a let's say 400 grit the water will stay and it'll start to put a rust in there so it, like, I think it works in the same way so 400 to 600 grit max um, another thing to be careful is <clears throat> when you put the hand guard or when you before you shape it see which way the pattern goes so this way you, you uh, this way you put the hand guard on with the pattern that you desired to look because when I did the uh, pommel the piece got welded, the, the threaded coupler got welded to it and when I screwed it on I didn't know which way it was gonna face so but it ended up perfect because uh, can you see it? Um, see how it flows downwards whereas this one it flows this way but this one flows down, downwards but I, I still like it going downwards because it has a nice look to it instead of going sideways and 
you can't see from here but if it went this way horizontally with with the handguard then it would kind of blend in but this way there's a contrast where lines are going horizontally and the lines going on vertically mix of vinegar 50% vinegar 50% ferric chloride and you'll have that nice dark edge I tried etching it with just ferric chloride and it doesn't work that well or it doesn't work at all for me maybe I'm doing something wrong another tip that I want to give you guys is uh, the reason why I didn't glue the, the red G10 uh, spacer right away when I glued the, the, the front one is because after I cut the block I didn't know you know once you screw the the pommel on I didn't know if if, if the block was uh, 90 degree or flat or parallel with the uh, the pommel so that's why I screwed it on I saw how it went on and I adjusted the block so it would fit the or, or so it would sit flat with the pommel and then after I saw that it, it the pommel sits flat with the uh, the handle then I added or glued the G10 scale another tip the threaded uh, rod that I had made from the the handle part when you put threads on it go past go past with your threads then uh, the threaded coupler is gonna sit this way you know if, if you don't go past you know when you start screwing it on and then you might run it run out of threads and you'll have to take it off and thread it again so just go a little bit past the where the coupler would sit I used the green compound to buff the handle uh, but before that I, I used uh, I went up to 600 grit with sandpaper and buffed it and it came out perfect when you're gonna file the groove in a handguard and a pommel make sure to score a line in the middle because if you go and start using a file to make that groove your file want, will want to go either sideways you know left or right and you'll have a hard time making that groove nice and center so after you score it you'll have a place where the file will glide in there was a comment you pay two hundred fifty dollars for some crappy piece of metal and another person replied that's pocket change for him for all the views he gets on his videos no it's not pocket change for me um, money doesn't come easy to me so everything that I make from YouTube videos and my knives goes back into materials new uh, tools because with, with each video that I post you see me having uh, or using new tools every time they're not cheap uh, so but yes I monetize my videos I I used to make good money but what happened in November of uh, last year Google or YouTube changed the algorithm and now I lost more than half of what I used to make so I try to upload videos as much as possible but I can only make what three videos maybe four maximum uh, per month whereas other youtubers they post daily or twice a week once a week and that helps a lot with views and uh, getting paid but I it's impossible for me to do that so no I do not make a lot of money from YouTube I do make some but it, it all goes back into my knife so don't think that because I have all these views I'm, I'm a some rich guy if if I made a lot of money from YouTube by now I already have the KMG grinder belt grinder or something better I would have a nice $1800 electric oven and a bunch of other tools milling machine I need one badly a lathe oh yeah if all that money like these uh, commenters said if all that money was coming in flowing in I would have all those tools but it's not that way it's not that easy to make money on YouTube you gotta work hard you gotta put them videos out and if you're not you don't have you're not gonna have those views but uh, a lot of times I think about why am I doing all this you know is it worth it 
but after I read all your comments and how you like watching the videos, you're fascinated by the craftsmanship that I put out there and I, I want to continue making those videos for you guys and for myself. I want to see how far I can go with knives. Um, what quality can I reach, you know? I mean, starting with this and ending up with something like this, it's a, it's a big step, it's a big prog progress for me. So, I want to see how far I can go with uh, this craftsmanship. A lot of you ask me what I do with knives. Uh, I sell them. Uh, most of them are spoken for while they're on, on paper. And currently I'm not taking any orders. Uh, I'm booked. Another person said that it must be difficult to part with your knives. Yes, very difficult. Uh, each knife that I make, it gets better and better. and I have a hard time giving it up. So, yes, you're right. I want to keep them all, I want to have a special room where I mount them on the wall and just leave them there and have a nice collection uh, that I could look and see how my uh, craftsmanship, level, craftsmanship level increases but unfortunately I cannot do that and uh, I have to part with them. It's a bittersweet moment but you gotta do what you gotta do. And on the last note the last question that was asked for me how do you sell your knives where do you find the customers and the answer to that is I never looked for customers not a single day where I advertised myself all I did was post videos on YouTube and I think that brought customers into my life I also uh, uploaded pictures on Google Plus Instagram and when people see your uh, quality they see how much work goes into your knives it, it, it brings the people to your front doorsteps basically uh, but if you want more in-depth uh, video on it check out this guy right here his name is uh, Ecom Knives or Mike Stewart and he's a great knife maker and if I have questions I always ask him and he replies back every time. So thank you Mike, thank you, thank you guys for watching my videos, I, re I read all your comments. I'll see you soon and for all those of you that want to know what the next, next knife is, this one right here. Take care.